Amidst the chaos of war, where heroes rise and nations clash, a battle unfolded that would shape the course of history. Welcome to the untold story of the Third Battle of Kharkov. The Soviets threatened to encircle and annihilate a larger German battle group than the one lost at Stalingrad. In the heart of Eastern Europe, the Soviet Union and Germany locked horns in a struggle for supremacy. Led by the brilliant minds of Colonel General Philip Golikov and Field Marshal Erich von Manstein, two formidable forces clashed in a battle that would test the limits of courage and determination. Behind the lines, strategic genius met unwavering resolve. Von Manstein, defying Hitler's orders, devised a daring plan to flank the enemy and reclaim the city of Kharkov. Golikov, leading the Soviet offensive, sought to deliver a devastating blow to the German forces. Amidst the deafening roar of tanks and the thunderous clash of artillery, the battle unfolded. The Soviet offensive pushed back the German forces, but von Manstein, unfazed, rallied his troops for a counterattack that would become the stuff of legends. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to History at War, where the echoes of the past resonate and the untold stories of courage and conflict come to life. Colonel General Philip Golikov's Voronezh Front led the operation, aiming to capture Kursk and Kharkiv. Under Lieutenant General Markian Popov, the Soviet offensive was initially successful in pushing back the German forces. A Russian army, positioned near their headquarters on the Don River, threatened to encircle and annihilate a larger German battle group than the one lost at Stalingrad. Field Marshal Erich von Manstein, the commander of Army Group South, faced this challenging situation. Despite Hitler's orders to hold the city, Kharkiv was abandoned by the Germans, leading to its recapture by the Red Army. Angry with the city's fall, Hitler visited the front to assess the situation and meet with von Manstein. Aware of the need for flexibility, von Manstein explained to Hitler that an immediate counterattack on Kharkov would be futile but he could successfully attack the Soviet flank and later recapture the city. As the Red Army approached Army Group South's headquarters, Hitler handed control over to von Manstein despite his desire for a swift counterattack. Von Manstein planned to isolate and destroy the Soviet spearheads before launching a campaign to retake Kharkov, followed by cooperation with Army Group Center to retake Kursk. To prevent disaster in southern Russia, Hitler provided von Manstein with the SS Panzer Corps a powerful corps-level panzer force led by General Paul Hauser. This force included the 1st Panzer Grenadier Division Leibstandarte, the 2nd Panzer Grenadier Division Das Reich, and the 3rd Panzer Grenadier Division Totenkopf. As the offensive commenced on a fateful February morning, General Paul Hauser's SS Panzer Corps surged forward like a steel tide sweeping across the battlefield. Their tanks, emblazoned with the insignia of Death's Head, served as a harbinger of destruction. The ground quaked beneath their mighty treads as they advanced, screening the larger assault by General Hermann Hoth's 4th Panzer Army. The 4th and 1st Panzer Armies struck with lightning speed, like a predator pouncing on its prey. The overextended flanks of the Soviet 6th and 1st Guards Armies trembled under the might of the German onslaught. Supply lines were severed, and enemy forces found themselves encircled, trapped in a merciless vice grip. In a desperate bid to alter the course of the battle, the Soviet High Command dispatched reinforcements. Colonel General Konstantin Rokossovsky's Central Front launched a daring offensive, seeking to exploit the vulnerable junction between Army Groups South and Center. The fate of nations hung in the balance as the battlefield erupted into a symphony of chaos and destruction. The relentless clash of steel and fire filled the air as both sides fought with unyielding determination. The Soviet Third Tank Army in particular bore the brunt of the German onslaught. Under the onslaught of relentless air assaults and strategic retreats, they suffered heavy losses. The battlefield became a graveyard of twisted metal and shattered dreams. Amidst the chaos, von Manstein's forces pressed forward with unwavering resolve. They moved inexorably toward Kharkov, their objective looming ever closer. The enemy's feeble attempts to halt their advance were but a temporary impediment. Von Manstein had set his sights on victory, and nothing could deter him. March 8th marked a turning point in the battle. The SS Panzer Corps completed its northern drive, splitting the Soviet 69th and 40th armies before veering eastward. The ground shook beneath the weight of their unstoppable advance. General Hauser, receiving orders from Hoth, knew that the time had come to seize victory. 
His troops clashed with fierce resistance in the northern streets of Kharkov, but with the aid of thunderous air support, they gained a foothold in the heart of the city. The Das Reich SS Panzer Division, on the city's western flank, tore through enemy defenses with relentless fury. Like a spear thrusting into the heart of the enemy, they breached an impregnable anti-tank trench and advanced towards their objective, the train station, a symbol of resistance. As day turned to night, the sound of gunfire echoed through the darkened streets of Kharkov. The Leibstandarte SS Panzer Division pressed forward, engaging in brutal urban warfare. The very essence of the city seemed to reverberate with the intensity of the battle. Each building became a fortress, each street a battleground. Finally, on March 13th, 14, the German troops wrested control of two-thirds of Kharkov from the clutches of the Soviet defenders. But the battle was far from over. The struggle raged on, the air heavy with the stench of smoke and the cries of the fallen. Through sheer determination and an indomitable spirit, the German forces persevered. The battle extended into March 15th and 16th as they relentlessly pushed the Soviet defenders out of a sprawling factory complex. The sight of German tanks crashing through the gates of victory sent shockwaves through the enemy ranks. The realization of their dire situation dawned upon the Soviet high command. Knowing that escape was their only hope, they ordered their troops to break free from the encirclement and head north. But the Red Army's earlier rush to attack the west had left them vulnerable. They lacked the crucial supplies of fuel, ammunition, and anti-armor support. Their valiant effort to escape turned into a desperate struggle for survival. The German forces, though outnumbered, unleashed their full might upon the retreating enemy. Division after division fell before the onslaught, as the Red Army suffered devastating losses. The battlefield became a graveyard of shattered hopes and broken dreams. Von Manstein's forces surged northeast from Kharkov, their momentum unstoppable. On March 18th, they captured Belgorod, a symbol of their indomitable will. Yet, despite their relentless advance, exhaustion and unfavorable weather conditions forced von Manstein to halt his offensive operations. The momentary pause prevented him from proceeding as planned to Kursk, a missed opportunity that would haunt him. But the Third Battle of Kharkov had set the stage for a grander conflict, a battle that would shake the very foundations of warfare, the Battle of Kursk. The flames of war had been stoked, and the world held its breath in anticipation of the monumental clash that lay ahead. As the dust settled on the battlefield, Kharkov stood as a testament to the indomitable spirit of both the Soviet defenders and the German conquerors. The city's scars told a story of sacrifice of the Soviet defenders, heroism from both sides, and the unyielding pursuit of victory. The Third Battle of Kharkov had forever etched its place in the annals of history, a pivotal chapter in the epic struggle for supremacy on the Eastern Front. Von Manstein possessed exceptional strategic thinking abilities. He had a deep understanding of the operational environment and the importance of controlling key objectives. His plan to attack the Soviet flank instead of launching a direct assault on Kharkov showcased his strategic acumen. By recognizing the futility of a head-on attack, he devised a plan that would exploit the enemy's vulnerabilities and maximize the German advantage. And that brings us to a close on our video today. Always with massive respect to the Soviet defenders and the German opposition, we can only admire such strong masculinity. Anyway, our links are all down below, and remember to check out our other videos and subscribe. We will see you guys soon.